Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the noble Yukir tribe. And we are no longer in the snowy lands that our tribe makes their home. Instead, we have run away from the hard snowy island, unfortunately leaving behind the last of the Black Rose line in the avalanche of snow. We also ran into a creature named Rhea, who we freed from the icy jeans, uh, that, the icy block that she was trapped in and tried to get her jeans. Turned out she only had armored body, so nothing new. Armored body is the one thing we definitely have solidly bred into our tribe of prehistoric gene collectors. But uh, we had to leave both of them abandoned in an avalanche. And Anthony, our elder, also got left behind as he shoved his daughter Kaylee on and insisted that the tribe flee for their life because they were starving to death. We are no longer starving to death, but we are hovering a little bit close for comfort to the edge of our food resources. So we are going to be staying on this island, kind of imagining that it's the summer migration to warmer lands, long enough to get at least 100 food, and then we will be moving on so that hopefully we can search for more of those icy genes. We do want to find the Mammut Foot and the two other icy genes that we've not even seen yet, after all. And that is the point of the Ukir tribe. However, the Ukirs have run into a mysterious disease, if you could say, a mysterious almost curse uh, on their children here, which is kind of interesting. This island has been giving us a little bit of, uh, I'm going to say a, a curse is a strong word. It's having a, well, but curse is also like the best word. It's having an effect on their children where so many of our babies are suddenly born with gills. And there's no gills. We have not put gills in the mutation menu. And we are not breeding creatures with gills, but we have a lot of babies born with gills lately. So I like to imagine that that goes to show that the Yukir tribe's perfected genes, which Luli actually displays uh, absolutely wonderfully, of having the mega horns, the cracker jaw, the armored body, and the hammer tail. The, these three, the hammer tail, the armored body, and the mega horns are actually like the prehistoric genes we've collected. But I'm gonna say that those genes do best when the creatures breed on snowy lands and yes i know that's not how the game actually works but i like the idea of we have to stay constantly pushing our tribe towards snowy lands to survive on because if we don't their children are born with very odd traits that just don't benefit the the point and the health and the name of the tribe so we're going to say that the reason we're having so many guild babies born is because we're not breeding on a snowy land and the Ukir tribe needs snow to stay true to their genetic lineage and to the lineage of the tribe as a whole. So hopefully we'll be able to get out of here soon, but not if I keep talking. So. Kaylee has rescued the tribe. She actually rescued the tribe from uh, having a much more painful time of adjusting and certain death by destroying a bush with her antlers, is what I'm going to say. She dashed over here, even heavily pregnant, after having led the tribe across the waterways with the chunks of ice breaking down behind them as it did last time they moved to a new island, threw herself into these grasses and destroyed a berry bush and thus saved the tribe from starvation. She has now had a few children, uh, one of whom is Taro, who has the gill curse that is affecting uh, what happens when Yukiers are not born in snowy lands. And we're gonna see if Korra and Paro might at least be able to have some fun wandering around in the ocean. Unfortunately, neither of them have any fishing ability, which really sucks because it would have been nice if they could fish. They have Ramhorn. Is Ramhorn, is Ramhorn gonna give me the ability to fish at all? No, just claw. So we might try to give them fishing tail and try breeding them together just to see what happens. Who knows? Maybe if we had had some fishers in the Yukir tribe who had been able to maybe like have one paw for for claw to fish and one paw for nimble fingers to crack open clams, maybe we would have survived on the hard island. So maybe this is a blessing from Yuki, the god of the snows in disguise, even though it just feels like a curse to the tribe right now. So enough of my yammering, even though I think this is a very exciting twist to their story. And let's have some babies born and say goodbye to Lily, who is unfortunately about to pass away of old age. Dun dun dun. Dun. <gasps> dun 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 oh my gosh are you kidding me let me see the tail <sighs> but that's okay because look hammer tail recessive oh curse that fertility though <laughs> you guys look at this Kaylee has had a baby boy with mega horns, and he has the F and E immunity, and over here we have H and D immunity. Luli, Luli, we have a boyfriend for you, and he's awesome. I kind of want to name him. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it. Bambi. 
I named him Bambi because doesn't he look like a, like not a moose like his great ancestor who he got the mega horns from he reminds me of like a big deer so this is Bambi and he will hopefully be a good mate for Luli and they will have some healthy children who have armored body possibly cracker jaw possibly hammer tail and the mega horns so there is hope yet for our Yukir line being able to perfectly pure breed in those prehistoric genes that we rescue and maybe one day they will be able to add a couple of those other awesome genes two of which i know but i'm not going to reveal that i know because we haven't found them yet and one of which would be the mammut foot and the time will come when we will probably have a lot of creatures that can't have all of the prehistoric genes because i'm pretty sure like uh one of them would can like two of them would conflict with cracker jaw so we might try ending up just with saying like mega horns um armored body hammer tail and maybe one mammut foot would represent uh, a, a healthy purebred yukir. And the other two traits we would rotate with Cracker Jaw. So we'll, we'll have some fun. But all right, so Bambi has been born, but that is a long way away from Luli's concerns. She is not really in the mood to have a mate just yet. She's, she's a wee one herself. And over here, we'll have Tom go ahead and get some of these nuts and get that little rabbit. I think Kaylee is very happy with how things are going, but um, let's see. Oh, good, and she has Dicker's paw. I totally forgot about that. So she'll get some food there. Niho can help out with collecting some more food over here. Uh, oh no, he's going to pass away and we don't even have any snow to put him on so that he can he can gently lay his head down and, and just leave behind his legacy that way. So D and G. Okay, we're going to go ahead and let him and Kaylee have a child. Never mind. Apparently his low fertility didn't help him. Niho, I tried. I tried to give you the opportunity. Oh no! And we have an unguarded baby! What am I doing? Avine, protect the infant. Oh, oh my gosh. Okay. Uh, and actually, we have another unguarded baby. Luli, your mother has passed away. Protect your siblings. <laughs> All right. We're going to have to be careful. I was not really watching that group closely enough. But I think I think that Taro will be able to be watched over. What does he have? He, he can do some collecting. And he can breathe underwater, which is kind of a unique trait. All right. And Avine has rushed down here to protect some of the babies. They're realizing the blue bird is not a very good thing to see. Let's see. And Coco, let's see. That clamshell wouldn't let us collect it. I wonder if it'd let us collect it today. <gasps> Who's this? Who's this? Who's this? Coco. Coco. Who? Coco. Nyom. Nyom. Invite to tribe. Who's this? Rosiana, look at you, my dear. You have almost no traits that we would want to include, actually. <laughs> I forget this isn't like most tribes where you get super excited to have things in. Uh, I think we actually even have bee immunity somewhere. So now that we're over here, maybe I didn't need to be so excited. But Rosiana, welcome. She has collecting and she actually has cracking. So we have a new creature in the tribe who has showed up. And uh, oh, look, we passed up a nest and everything. We were just so busy going, who is this who is this um but it'd be kind of fun since she has spikes it'd be fun if there was some safe way to collect from the cactus even if it was like a really 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 specific thing like armored body why would armored body be bothered by a cactus i argue that you should be able to pick from a cactus if you have armored body seems to make sense to me it'd be like being an armadillo picking from a cactus maybe but welcome to Rosiana. Not sure how we feel since we're going to try to keep the max population to 20 and we're a little low on food right now. But it was worth it to chase down a new creature and I think Sienna was super curious about that. Alright, so then we have little Taro hanging out over here. No! Ah, no! Wait, well I guess that doesn't matter too terribly much. Alright, Lului. Lului would just be able to attack. So would Anari. Like, well... And Korra didn't even have a chance to be worried about that. Her sisters handled it just fine. <laughs> yeah, so it looks like our new generation is learning to be much more aggressive with, um, with their hunting tactics. And Korra can come on down. And she and Taro will know that they're the only two in the tribe right now who have these weird things and just this pool and affinity to water. So we're going to let those two go and explore water because they're not going to drown, even though it would kind of distress the rest of the tribe a little bit. They'd be a bit worried about it, I think. All right, Naveen, go back over and protect your children <laughs> who seem to be Tarunu. Oh, Tarunu, I never gave you a name and your mother died and everything. I'm sorry about that. But he carries a few of the recessives, not as pure uh, purebred as we would really want to see. 
He could technically be a mate in a pinch with Lu for Lului, but we'll have to see how that goes. All right, Taranu, I kind of want to name you after your dad, Avin. So what about uh, Avaru? There we go. I kind of wanted to give him a name after his dad because I feel like Avin has worked really hard to be a good father. Also, could Avin be a good mate to Kaylee? Not quite as good a mate as needed. All right, and Kaylee, I think she's really happy with how things are going uh, with the food situation. So we'll go ahead and let her focus on having some children. Uh, just she's having really healthy, wonderful, fantastic children with Bambi after all. And then a little Arvanu. Uh, let's see. Let's try this again. Little Avaru. Oh my gosh. <laughs> That's what I get for giving them such exotic names. We'll hang out with his dad. And over here, I feel like Rastiana would be a little surprised to see them. But like, well, okay, I can show you where there's some interesting things. Here's another cactus, uh, which we don't really want. Do we? Can we smell anything? There's a Donomingo nearby. <laughs> oh, gosh. And do we have any digging traits? We have strength and cracking. I think that... I think that Sienna would be a lot more interested in maybe finding, there we go. And Coco, we'll go ahead and have her reveal where the little nest is. But Sienna may be interested in finding berry bushes that she could even destroy and bring back uh, to the tribe. But now that I think about it, unlike other tribes, like right now we're doing the Baron Ya Bear tribe with the 0 0.5.0 update. Unlike other tribes, this tribe would not want to really breed with outsiders at all. Uh, other than th those we crack open from ice blocks and have as prehistoric genes, because we have to preserve the prehistoric genes. This is still the version of the game where we lack the prehistoric genes in the mutation menu. Not sure how I feel about them being available permanently in the mutation menu in the new version. Let me know what you guys think about that. I kind of like some genes being super, super rare and you like have to keep them actively in the bloodline or they disappear but yeah just let me know what you guys what you guys think about that pretty happy with where we're at i hear a dodomingo nearby i wonder if we could make a nest to lure a dodomingo by so yeah the little ones are learning how to hunt very well all right we'll send these little ones into the water taro what do you think unfortunately you can't fish the waters are full of fish is what we're learning so many fish and nothing we can do about it, unfortunately. So we can just look. Um, and then we've got Arana, who can't collect, but she destroyed the berry bush to be helpful. And then Lului, uh, who can hunt. I feel like Lului would be a really... Whoa! Whoa? <gasps> ah! Lului, run! <laughs> Lului, attack! Get away! No! She's like the highest- oh my gosh. I, okay, I think she would report that incident to Avin, and Avin would call his son over, and Avin and Avaru are gonna try to chase this this rogue away. Get away from my Lului. She is, she is meant for Bambi, and they've got- like this tribe just has a much stricter- much stricter breeding control than any other, really. So, oh my gosh, that's just not the way we do things. Go away, Dodomingo. That's gonna be probably Lului's nest for all I know. All right, good grief. Uh, let's see, there we go. And then I think we can actually maybe let Raziana go unless she's going to help us specifically get anything useful. And I don't think she is. So I think we'll go ahead and let Raziana go. We don't need to keep her around so that she can just continue to gather up our food. And we'll go ahead and set Coco as an alpha. And let's just, we're not being aggressive to Raziana, just she's not a member of the Ukir tribe. And the Ukir tribe is kind of insular. And that's not a bad thing. All right, Sienna's going to come over and collect up some berries. There we go. And I guess Sienna should go back and try to find love in her tribe. Because, yeah, now that I, I think about it, we wouldn't look for mates outside of our tribe like we are with the Baronia Bears. Because they they have to keep these very specific genes going. Like Bambi. Bambi, even. Bambi. And then maybe Tom. So who could be a good mate for Sienna? Okay, we're running into a lot of E immunity, so there's a little bit of a risk there. Oh, but Todd Dick, uh, dear, uh, here Duke. Oh my gosh, I've been definitely playing niche too long if I'm tripping over their names this bad. I want to name him after his dad, so let's go with uh, Tom Keir. I'm just in the mood to name him after their parents today, apparently. And we'll go ahead and have Kaylee have another baby, I think. Or at least if she can. Oh dear. 
Uh, well, okay, we'll gather up some food this time, so we'll have more more food to feed the babies. But we gotta get rid of this rogue male, because he cannot come for Lului. We have very strict breeding in this tribe. Normally, we don't. This time around, we definitely do. Alright, let's go ahead and see what happens. Rogue male, you're not welcome here. You can go ahead and- yeah, that's right. I think Aveen has no regrets <laughs> about having chased him away. And then, somebody got a leech? Aw, oh, man! All right, so the best thing we can do with Korra and the best thing we can do with Taro is let them roam around the waters. I wonder what she just tried to collect. Roam around the waters and uh, get covered in leeches and then clean the leeches up off of them. All right, Tom Kier can come over here. We'll go ahead. Kaylee, Kaylee's having a hard time with these babies all of a sudden. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh my gosh, she's so cute. Ravako with eye immunity. Short-sighted eyes. We're really hitting a point where we're so purebred that our immunity genes are getting dangerous, but at the same time, trying to bring in a new creature. Oh, we'll have to see. So far, so far that's not a risk, but still. All right, Coco, you have D and E immunity. So does everybody else under the sun. Uh, what is... What is, what is Lulu? She has D and H, and then we have F and E. They really were a match made in heaven. Anything else would not have worked. All right, Lulu. Yeah, Lulu is just kind of keeping that. She's like, get out of my nest. Oh, they have the most startling yells. And then I think Anari might be excited about trying to eat him. So yeah, they've almost eaten the Dodomingo. And Aveen, who could you make? No, Aveen, keep your name. It's really cool. Aveen, there we go. Aveen has D and F immunity, so would he make a good mate for B and E? Yeah, Sienna, Sienna, go down, move it, move it, Sienna. Okay, you can, you can get, okay, you can get a couple more pieces, and then let's try to get Sienna down there, and we'll get Aveen up here. He can guide his son up, and then let's see. I think Avru, Avaru will stay down here with his sister Inari. Anari, you need to be able to have a interesting mate as well. So Anari may mate with Bambi? Yeah, um, Anari may mate with Bambi. So we're, we've still got okay immunity genes, but we had a little rogue child, uh, not a rogue child per se, but like a little wandering child still in all of our berry bushes in just a second there. Mm -hmm. Don't know how I feel about that. Oh, and Coco, I forgot you have Digger's Paw. Very useful on an island like this. All right, so let's see how things go. The Dodomingo died and left behind the most tiny piece of meat ever. <laughs> that is hilarious. We'll let Tom Kier eat that. Uh, and Tom is over here just gathering up different pieces. I think Kaylee, Kaylee will just go ahead and uh, we'll have her jump into this nest after all. Fix up this nest and just destroy this berry bush to eat. She is just kind of in a hungry mood right now. And that gives us lots of extra food. And then Anari could be a good mate for Bambi as well and possibly get some of those essential family genes mixed in. She also wants to be a good hunter and Avaru knows that there are rogue creatures out here he has to help defend his family from. All right, and Korra, I'm, I'm sort of half tempted. Uh, we do have collecting, but not cracking, dang it. I'm sort of half tempted to let our two creatures with uh, underwater breathing go because I don't know, now they can have babies, but I don't know how they really contribute to the family. You know what I mean? But at the same time, maybe they're a blessing in disguise. And if we have them go ahead and have babies, I'll go ahead and let her, she can make a nest underwater. <laughs> I mean, if we go ahead and let them have children, what if then those children are able to help us survive on the next islands? What if we need to sacrifice the cracker jaw, but try to bring back in the hammer tail and keep the armored body and uh, maybe even get the, the omega horns in there? So I don't want to give up on that yet. It's an experiment, a very risky experiment, but an experiment. All right, Bambi. I think he's just going to be kind of clearing spots away. Lului, Luluri, Lului. Uh, can she do anything? I think that they're feeling a little restless because there's not enough hunting. And this group in particular seems to be much more focused on hunting than some of our past you here tribes have been. And Aveen will try to get you up so that we can have you go ahead and meet with Sienna. And Sienna has a Dodomingo to hunt. Oh, and Sienna found a nest. Don't mind if I do, Dodomingo. And then Coco, 
Coco has found some fish and that once again glitched spot with the clam shell. But I think she'll be very happy just to kind of have her own little corner over here and pass away there, unfortunately. All right, so let's see. What kind of baby are we going to have with Kaylee this time? Another, another. Yes, more mega horns. Yes. I'm so happy, and her name is Coco East, and I'm gonna leave that because Coco literally just died. <gasps> Wonderful, more Mega Horns with B and H immunity. Kaylee, you really did rescue the tribe. Isn't that so exciting? Because Kaylee is from the Riri line. Do you guys remember Riri? The unexpected, uh, the squirrel that we weren't going to breed in, and then we decided on a whim to breed in. So that's a lesson in adding in immunity at the last minute and just going ahead and seeing long term what might arrive. But when you have to get ready to leave to a new island, that's kind of risky, but dang, how exciting. All right. All right, so we've got a lot to do, a lot to sort out. Bambi has just grown up as well. So that means that we are finally finally going to have, if Bambi can throw uh, with that little recessive hammer tail he has, if he can throw some children who have mega horns, armor body, hammer tail, and hopefully cracker jaw, we will have the most purebred Yukir line we can hope for. We'll get a few of them, start gathering up some food, and head off to the new island. Pretty excited to see where this chapter has gone, and I really feel like it's all thanks to Kaylee, and we won't stay on this island and like conquer it like we often do. We'll just get ready to move on because the tribe really doesn't feel at home if they're not on the snowy lands, and we've had that weird weird effect that the land is having on these creatures such as with Korra here who has been uh she's getting ready to have a child and we may even have a child right here on this nest side and we'll definitely have to make sure let's see is there anything we can gather up here food wise at all I don't think so <laughs> but we should go ahead and see if uh let's see can I do any attack I can on that little that little rabbit we're going to see if we can get a fishing tail added in and maybe we'll end up with armor body, fishing tail, hammer tailed, uh, <laughs> mega horned creatures who can swim. We're going to have to see. We're going to have to see about that. But all right. I'll see you guys next time. Bye bye.